todo. Good evening. שמחת בחגיך, אתה ובנך ובתך, ועבדיך ועמתיך, והלוי והגר והיתום והאלמנה, אשר בישריך. שבעת ימים תחוג לאדוני אלוהיך. במקום אשר יבחר אדוני, כי יברכך. בכל תבואתך ובכל מעשה ידיך והיית אך שמח ושמחת בחגיך והיית אך שמח ושמחת Thank you, thank you, Boaz Darod, one of our young, talented Israel Movement for Progressive Judaism, Kol and Nishama singers, it's great to have you here. Shalom to everyone from Israel and around the world. My name is David Bernstein, I'm Deputy Director of the Israel Reform Movement, um, and it's a pleasure to have you all here with us in our virtual sukkah together with all of our partners from, from Artsenu, from the URJ in Artsa, from the World Union for Progressive uh, Judaism, and, uh, and of course, from, of course from, the, from the IMPJ itself, from our communities and congregations. And in the course of the evening, you'll meet a lot of our guests of our Ushpizin. But first of all, I want to introduce Lena Zilberman Soloway. Um, Lena is a student at Hebrew Union College and is a board member of our congregation in Mivaseret, Kamatz. So Lena also is special in this program because she actually helped organize the whole program. So Lena, thank you and please. 
unmute yourself. Yeah. Shalom, everyone. My name is Lana. It's wonderful to see so many people from around the world in here. So first of all, I already see that you started to write your names and uh, locations, which is wonderful. We would also suggest if you can do that on the name uh, next to your uh, picture, that will uh, help us uh, during uh, later stages of this evening. So if your name stated as someone else, please make sure that uh, your personal name and you can add location um, when you rename it. Welcome to our sukkah. Uh, it is very, very uh, wonderful to celebrate together the special holiday of Sukkot, which is both universal, since at the end of it, we're going to all pray for rain that all of us are so much in need for. But on the other hand, it's also very particular and uh, very Jewish and very unique for our own people. And actually, there's no other people that I know that uh, instead of building a castle or a victory gate is building a sukkah which is something so unstable in order to celebrate that joyful event. And in the book of Deuteronomy, we learn about the great joy of this uh, special holiday. It's actually a double joy. And one of the explanations is the double joy for the two mitzvahs that we have for this holiday. One is the mitzvah of the four species, Arbat Aminim. And the other one is about sitting in the sukkah. And therefore, we're happy that everyone are sitting in our virtual sukkah together, although it's one day earlier than the actual holiday. So tonight, or this afternoon, depends where you are in the world, we're going to try to combine all the symbols of the holiday in one uh, executive hour. We're going to start with sitting in the sukkah and with the tradition of the Oshpizin. Oshpizin, some will say it's in Greek and others will say it's in Aramaic. We already know this word from the Talmud. But in the Talmud, it doesn't talk about being a guest in a sukkah. This is a later interpretation that comes on in our tradition. And today we use this word of the Oshpizin, of the guest, as having guests in our sukkah. And traditionally, the Holy Zohar is teaching us about seven special guests that are coming into our sukkah. We have one guest for each of the days. And uh, traditionally, we talk about Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and Joseph and Moses and Aaron and David. And later on, we also added the women, whether it's being Sarah or Rachel or Miriam or Abigail or Ruth and Esther and so on. And today we're going to have all the seven Oshpizin together at the same night in the same afternoon. And we're going to meet them one by one as we uh, follow along. And in addition to that, before uh, David will uh, call out our first Ushpizin, our first uh, guest in our virtual sukkah, I'll say that we will also add the blessings that we tend to say over uh, several days or at least the evening of the Sukkot, traditionally tomorrow, but we will bless the wine and we will bless the four species and we will bless Shechiano for all of us being here together. And we'll also add a special blessing because we are in a special year and that's the year of the Shemitah. So all of that is awaiting for us starting right now. And David, I pass it on to you to invite our first Ushpizin. Thank you. First of all, everyone here in this room and everyone on Facebook throughout the world are Ushpizin, are our special guests. But we have a special guest here who I don't think anyone in this group needs an introduction about. And we're very excited that he's with us. He need, he's a incredible person. I, I now call on member of Knesset, Rabbi Gilad Kariv, to share a few words to us as our as our first Ushpizin. Gilad, please. Shalom, Shana Tova, dear uh, friends, colleagues, and uh, partners from uh, Israel and around uh, the world. It's wonderful to be here with you in uh, this uh, uh, virtual uh, uh, sukkah of the Israeli movement uh, together with our uh, partnering organizations around the, around the world. Um, thank you for the opportunity to share with you a, a few a, a greetings and, and thoughts. I want first to start by uh, greeting my good uh, friend and partner for many years, Anna Kislansky, that was uh, officially elected to lead uh, our movement, the IMPJ, and to greet the IMPJ board for making the right, uh, the right decision after a very serious and thoughtful uh, uh, 
uh, process in the IMPJ uh, board. I know that uh, Anna will uh, maintain and strengthen all the uh, important achievements that we achieved together in the last decade, and even more important, will bring new ideas, new visions, and and new ways to to lead our uh, our movement. I'm sure that uh, uh, the chair of the IMPJ board will add uh, more to my uh, to my greetings. But those are definitely wonderful news to start the uh, the year with. And I will also uh, greet my friend, partner, colleague uh, uh, Oli Erez Lachowski for being elected to lead the Israel Religious Action Center as, uh, as its uh, a director. I think that we have uh, today uh, two super women, uh, super reform women that uh, are leading our movement and its institutions. We have another uh, 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 leading and wonderful rabbi that is leading Maram. And we have another uh, great uh, uh, friend, Rabbi Nami Kelman, who is leading the HUC. So this is definitely the era of the Ushpizot and not the Ushpizin for the Israel Reform Movement. And those are, uh, those are wonderful, uh, wonderful news. I want to share with you that um, we, we continue to work hard the movement and its leadership and uh, myself to make sure that uh, our presence, uh, our uh, unprecedented presence in the Israeli political uh, circles will uh, enable us to achieve uh, important and historic uh, achievements. In the short term, we are working very hard in order to secure two moves. One is to renew the commitment of the Israeli government to the Kotel, to the Kotel agreement. And the second, which is not less important, in a way even more important, is to make sure that for the first time, the Israeli government is meeting its commitment to support uh, the work of the non-Orthodox movements and our partnering organizations in the Jewish pluralistic uh, uh, scene here in Israel to support our work on, I don't want to say on an equal base immediately, but definitely on a strategic and serious uh, manner. And we are working very hard in order to make sure that uh, this uh, support and commitment of the Israeli government uh, will be done through the Ministry of the Diaspora Affairs. So it will include not only the IMPJ, but also our uh, partnering organizations around the world. And in that regard, although always uh, political and governmental processes uh, take time, the coming few months, are quite criti critical uh, for the two uh, important tasks, the Kotel Agreement and the uh, uh, formal and well-established support for our efforts in Israel around the world. In a more longer term, together again, uh, uh, with the Israeli movement, with our uh, worldwide partners and with the uh, Masority Conservative movement, we need also to start and to design the way we want to establish the relations, the formal relations between our movements and our communities with the Israeli government. I'm not suggesting that uh, we will be able to gain whatever we want to gain. This is a complicated Israeli uh, government with a very thin uh, a majority. It's not a secret that uh, the current government includes also more conservative parties, orthodox, uh, modern orthodox uh, uh, parties, and we have a very long uh, journey ahead of us. But I think this is a, a definitely opportunity for us to occupy ourselves in a serious process of at least being able to say what we want to achieve in uh, in a longer uh, in a longer term 
and now we translate the values that we uh, always uh, advocated for, freedom of religion, uh, uh, religious pluralism, how we translate them to concrete public and governmental uh, policies, and if not now, in Lo Achshav as Ematai, this is definitely the most welcoming Israeli government in many years uh, to our uh, uh, status in Israel and around the world, and we need to use it in a strategic manner and, and wisely. Uh, uh, my last comment in that uh, regard, besides uh, uh, wishing you all the Gmarto, the Pitkatova, the Chag Sameach, is to suggest that uh, the fact that uh, we are involved today in the Israeli political scene in an unprecedented uh, way doesn't mean that we can put aside our uh, public global, uh, global efforts. On the contrary, I think that uh, in the coming uh, weeks and months, together with all of you and the leadership of our communities and movements around the world, we will have to think how we create a global Jewish progressive campaign that pushes the Israeli government because there is a potential to take the right, uh, the right decisions. And uh, we are used to assemble our forces when we meet a crisis, like with the conversion uh, uh, legislation in the past. We need also to train ourselves how to collect our forces in a moment of potential and a, a moment of opportunity. And this is the current uh, uh, situation. And uh, uh, I call all of us to be engaged through the national institutions, through the relations with the embassies and other official representatives of the Israeli government, how we create with the conservative movements and other partners a global campaign to push the current government to embrace the concept of religious uh, pluralism. I want to thank you all for your friendship and partnership with the INPJ to encourage you, all of you, to continue to support uh, uh, the leadership of the INPJ. It's not easy to be a leader of the reform movement here in, uh, in Israel and Yair and Anna and all the rabbis and all the community leaders need uh, uh, this ongoing dialogue and your support. So Shana Tova and Pitkatova uh, and good health, and thank you all of you for your uh, personal messages during the days I dealt with uh, a, a COVID situation. I wish you all Shana Shel Refua Shlema, Chaim Veshalom. Thank you, dear friends. Thank you, um, Gilad. And Gilad already introduced uh, Anna as superwoman. And I'll just add, it's my honor to introduce Anna Kozlansky, who just about two weeks ago formally became the director general of the INPJ. We've for years talked to all of you about how over the past decade, we've more than doubled our congregational presence in Israel and increased our foothold on Israel in so many areas. Anna is the person who carried out that process. Anna, thank you. Uh, David and uh, Gilad. It's a pleasure to see everybody. Um, and I, I want to start with a message that, um, you know, on Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, we pray together and all the deeds will be blessed and all the creatures will bow down before you and all will form one partnership, to do your will with a full heart. So already in these prayers during the high holidays, we wish to be connected and linked to all creatures of the world. And on Sukkot, we continue with this commandment through the mitzvah of the Arbaat Aminim, the four species. Uh, we take the lulav, the willow, the myrtle, and the etrog and shake them together according to the commandment, nektilat uh, lulav, as written in the Torah in the book of Leviticus. And um, the Midrash Vaikra Rabbah indicates that the four species represent four different types of the people of Israel. So 
God, according to the Midrash, uh, says that we unite all the species together so that they may atone for one another. And I believe that we, the reform movement in Israel, have a role in the Israeli society to take the four species, each of which, according to the Midrash, represents a different aspect of Israeli society, and to connect them as one not only in order for them to atone for one another through their complementary qualities, but in order for them to enjoy each other's qualities. So the year 5,872 uh, began in our movement with the theme of, of connections. Um, and uh, we reconnected after a year of online prayers from afar uh, and Finally, we were able to meet in person um, and had a lot of events and services that allowed thousands of Israelis to connect in the various synagogues and IMPJ institutions. And I want to highlight uh, two very special minyanim that we held. One um, was the Yom Kippur minyan for young adults that called Mekachim et Azman sanctifying time. And in one fellowship, we united young adults who came from all over the country and from various sectors of Israeli society to experience a significant Yom Kippur with a variety of learning and prayer styles in an innovating and, in, and an inspiring way. So that was one very special minyan. And um, another minyan was our pre-IDF Mechina Young Leadership Program, both in Jaffa and Cholon, uh, for the first time uh, brought together their 86 high school graduates from all over Israel and even a few from North America. And they joined together for meaningful Yom Kippur services, ending with the moving prayer of Neila in the Mishkenot Ruth Daniel community in Jaffa. So our commitment to supporting all sectors of Israeli society also uh, led us to establish in the beginning of uh, this Jewish year with the support of the Israeli Ministry of Welfare, a unique project called Bait Bakila, a home in the community. Bait Bakila is an inclusive housing project for people with disabilities anchored in the congregational life of Yozma community. And as this pilot project develops, we plan uh, throughout the, the, the this coming years to expand this model to additional uh, locations in Israel. And um, I think that the integration of the week in the Israeli society is one of our responsibilities. And this year too, Keren Bechavod, IMPJ Center for Social Responsibility is providing for the poor. Hager, Ayatom, Halmana, through food packages for Rosh Hashanah, as well as activating empowerment groups for underprivileged women from various sectors of Israeli society. So, and that's just uh, three highlights of uh, the things that are occurring uh, in the beginning of this. Uh, um, this uh, new year. And tomorrow on the eve of Sukkot, we will gather in our congregations and in our Sukkot Shalom, the Sukkah of peace. We will shake the four species to the directions of the four winds of heaven and bless the connections between all of us, Klal Israel. Chag Sameach. Thank you so much. Uh, dear Anna and uh, MK Gilad Kariv. And we will be back to the species uh, shortly. But just to uh, get us uh, started right with the blessings before I'll invite uh, our next uh, speaker, I would like to bless together for us uh, sitting in this sukkah so you can join me from your homes. Baruch Ata, Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Asher Kitshanu, Vemitzvotav, Vetzivanu, Meyashev, Besukkah. And from here, it is my great uh, pleasure to invite Rabbi Benjamin Minich, who is also an outstanding musician, who will lead us in singing Psalm Kavzain 27 from Tehillim. Hi, good evening, everyone. I'm, I'm the one who is still thrilled to host the 
Mechinot from Jaffa and Holon. You can even hear it from my voice. <laughs> Thank you so much, uh, Rabbi Benny. I'd like to now introduce our third Ushbiza, I guess, um, or from our Ushbizot, as Gilad said, our good friend and our partner, Rabbi Leah Molstein, who is the uh, chairperson of Artsenu, the network of Reform Zionist movements throughout the world. Leah. Thank you so much for welcoming me into this beautiful Sukkah. Sukkot is the season of building. As we build our Sukkot, we are reminded that there is still work for us to do to help realize a world of blessing and peace. As Zionists, we know that the dreams of the founders of the State of Israel have only partly been realized. Alongside our siblings in Israel, let us be builders, not just dreamers, and work toward a state of Israel that embraces democratic values in Judaism in all of its forms, as well as protecting the rights of its minorities. But this is also the season of thanksgiving, of giving thanks for the gifts of the land, for gifts yet to come. And so we raise our cup of wine in gratitude for the gifts of the land of Israel and for the blessing of being able to celebrate this evening together with the Israeli reform movement, bringing us together from so many lands of the world. Let us give thanks for the impressive growth of the reform movement in Israel, for the incredible work done by rabbis, congregations and the movement, truly realizing the prophetic vision for out of Zion goes forth such wealth of reformed teaching, from music to Torah commentary to liturgy and so much more. So as we enter Zman Simchatenu, the season of rejoicing, let us say together, Baruch Ata Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Bore Peri HaGafen, Lechaim. L'chaim, thank you, Leah. And now I call upon another one of our really incredible friends, good friends, and partner, the president of the World Union of Progressive Judaism, Rabbi Sergio Bergman, who is our next, this time, Ushpizim. Sergio. Toda, David. Shana tova, Hatima tova. And now, Chag Sameach. We are so, so really glad to be part of this gathering. And like you say, and also Gilad said, also we have our super women. We are here together with Carol Sterling, our chair of women. And we are so, so really privileged to be part of this 
sukkah and uh, this is the uh, israeli worldwide sukkah and we are really so thank you that uh, the impj invite us to be part of uh, this uh, opportunity and very very special i want to thank uh, you david and anna especially and atzlaharavana in the new challenge we are all with you to support you in in this new stage and uh, to bless to bless with the four species with the lulav like our uh, rabbis teach us that the four species also represent the four corners of the world and now we are all together and then on yom shaini vavokar that is Tuesday morning when we take the lulav we will pray to be one one people one extended family around the world we are the reform movement and we are so proud and so glad to make our blessing like one family baruch ata hashem elokenu melech haolam asher kitshanu bemitzvot abet sivanu al netilat lulav our praise to you adonai sovereign of all who all of us with mitzvot commanding us to make and to take up the lulav. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Rabbi Sergio. I now have the very, very special privilege of calling on another partner and friend, someone who actually I think I've personally known for at least 45 years um, from camp, going way back to Camp Swig. Rabbi Rick Jacobs, president of the Union of Reform Judaism, of the North, head of the North American Reform Movement. Rick, you're somewhere here, I think. Thank you, David. And uh, what a pleasure to be with everyone. Shana Tova. Uh, also to add a bracha and uh, expression of love and support to Anna uh, as she takes on this new chapter. We're, we are all with you and excited for the journey ahead. I must say that I had the longest Yom Kippur, I think, of recorded history. It was a full day and a half. Why? Because um, at noontime in New York, I began Yom Kippur uh, with our colleagues in Jerusalem and Tel Aviv uh, to literally hear Kol Nidre chanted so magnificently at noon, Erev Yom Kippur, uh, did extend the length of the holy day, but it also extended the meaning and the impact and the power of our being a global reform movement. It's truly extraordinary what we together not only represent, but are shaping. And we all know that in the, the ancient debate about is the holiday of Sukkot really a holiday for an agriculturally settled people? Or is it the holiday of desert wanderers, people who are on a journey? And of course, the machlok, it goes back and forth. And on different years, you can side with different uh, points of view. But I would just celebrate that we are on a journey as a reform movement. And it's a journey uh, of growing strength and of growing impact. And we are literally global in our um, not only our presence, but our creativity. I, I just note that last night I was having dinner with friends in New York City in a sukkah on the streets of New York City. How is that possible? Well, there are literally sukkot all over New York City in the street because that's where restaurants can actually open. And just, just give this a tiny bit of thought that the most safe place for us to be celebrating is outside in a sukkah, right? That's the safest place from COVID-19 and the Delta variant. What a brilliant uh, invention our ancestors created our way of celebrating safely in a moment of a pandemic, to be outside and to feel the vulnerability of the world as it is, and it's vulnerable to so many of us spread out in some very inhospitable places around the globe. But I hope that as we sit in our Sukkot, whether it's on the streets of New York City or Belarus or um, Ramat Gan, wherever it is that we sit, we feel a sense of openness, a sense of connection, that we also dream of a time where Yashvu Ish Tachat Gafno Tachat Inato, that one day all of us will sit peacefully and safely 
and in good health under our vine and our fig tree, and none shall make us afraid. So I would just uh, bring us to the bracha of Shechianu. It is no small thing, friends, that we have made it through this moment to reach this time together, to feel the strength and the hope and the possibility of our movement and our work, as well as to feel the absolute blessing of still being alive and still being blessed to be part of this community. So I hope you will join me in the Shechianu, a prayer that is meaningful at seasonal festivals, but especially one where we actually have come through seasons of uncertainty. So please join me together. Baruch Ata Adonai, Loheinu Melech Olam, Shechianu Vikiamanu, Vihigianu Lazman Hazeh. Praised are you, eternal our God, who gave us life, sustained us, and somehow miraculously brought us to this season of Zman Simchatenu, the season of our rejoicing. Thank you. Um, okay. Um, I'm, we're looking for, oh, here they are. Okay. Lana? Good evening, everyone. As this new year uh, arrived and started, this is also the beginning of Shnat Shemitah. And for Rosh Hashanah, we were looking for a special song for Shnat Shemitah to sing together. And we couldn't find any, actually. So we took some verses from the books of Leviticus and Deuteronomy, and one verse from Zechariah, and created a new nigun for Shnat Shmita. Shabbat 
שבת לאדוני, ושבת לשבת לאדוני, שבת לאדוני. Thank you, Boaz. Thank you, Rabbi Oded Mazor. I think that I imagine that we were the first international audience to hear this brand new um, beautiful melody. Thank you. Um, I'd like to call upon my colleague and friend, Rabbi Mira Regev, who is the director in the Israel Movement for Reform and Progressive Judaism of everything we do in culture and in content and in our, uh, multi in our multimedia. She's the brains behind the incredible multimedia work we've done in Israel since the outset of COVID. Mira will do a very short um, um, shiur lesson about uh, Shanat Shemitah. And after, and after that, we'll be breaking up into groups with uh, facilitators in different rooms. So Mira, please. Thank you, David. Um, I'm honored. And thank you, uh, Oded and Bob. Oh, Mary, you're okay. muted. I am unmuted, sorry. So I want to thank David and Boaz and uh, um, Oded for this beautiful nigun who leads us into Shnat Shemitah. And I want to start with this uh, very famous uh, midrash that uh, from Sifrei on uh, Parashat Bahar, what does Shemitah, uh, the sabbatical year, have to do with Mount Sinai? And this is because this is how uh, the parasha of Bahar Leviticus uh, 25 starts, but it became a phrase uh, in Israel when you want to uh, ask Ma Kesher in Hebrew, like, what are we talking about? Why are we even talking about Shemitah or everything? And uh, what does it have to do with uh, Sinai, but also what it has to do with life? Like, what is what the meaning of it all? And it's a good, very, very good question when you think about Shemitah and land and we're not agricultures and we, and we actually, is it really uh, meaningful for us in the 21st century on 2021? And in many ways um, we can say that we don't want to think about Shemitah as meaningful because it's so scary. It's scary of letting go. But after uh, these two amazing years that were so challenging of the coronavirus, and uh, and here in Israel, just yesterday, I went to an, a spring in the mountains of Jerusalem, and it was all burned, and it was so hard uh, to see it, and it's hard not to think about climate change, and about this kind of letting go that we just need to let go of safetyness and to let go of everything that we actually thought that we know, even if like, when are we gonna be home and when we are going to be able to get out. Maybe we will not be able to sit in the sukkah tomorrow with a friend like my brother said to me that yes, he's sorry, he won't be able to come tomorrow because he's going to be isolated because of the coronavirus. So there is a lot of unknownness and, um, and so this practice in Shemitah this year is really, really strong. And I wanna um, show you, I wanna introduce a very interesting uh, Mekubal. Elena, can you uh, go ahead to, to go uh, to the last, I think, to the last, Yes, can you see, isn't it too small? Um, so there is a very interesting Mekubal uh, from the 15th century, Akedat Yitzchak, uh, who was both a philosopher and a Mekubal. And uh, I know David is only five minutes, so it's less, but we're not going to read all of it. But he was really uh, talking about what are we really doing in Shemitah when we're not in Israel? And most of the people here are not in Israel and we are not agricultures. And it's very uh, far away from our world. What, what do we really have to uh, take from it? And this is what he said. And I, um, I'll read only one verse from what he said. He said something like, he said that. Um, 
The way I see it, the expensive attention given by the Torah to instruct and inspire us regarding the release of the land, it is uh, it's actually to speak to our souls. It's intent to it's open our ear and awaken our heart, to open our blind eyes mirrored by into fantasies of this world, its deceptions and vanities. We were not sent to this world to be servants, but for different purpose, more glorious and wondrous. A work of the land should be lonely to be derived, sustained and support our, <coughs> sorry, it's only here to uh, serve a divine purpose. And his beautiful, I think, words really uh, after, you know, Yom Kippur and Rosh Hashanah tells us that um, this Shemitah that we are being commanded is not something from outside that um, like a coronavirus that we, we are being forced to let go. This is something more about an inner intention of time to think about what is the purpose of being on the land and what is the purpose of the land and to find the inner uh, purpose, the divine purpose of it. It's a, a, actually a, an amazing opportunity. And to think about, you know, letting go, we can say, oh, we just need to let go or really take it as a practice of thinking of what is really important to us. What is a divine purpose? And we are a religious movement. So we can actually, uh, we have a role here in this really special times of Israel, of the world, to help people to think about what is really important to, of them in this year. After a lot of things that have been changed, what do they want to let go of? And what do they want to hold? What is the real purpose of their life? Um, I actually really so happy to have a whole year of uh, a Shabbat time, even though I'm going to work really hard of teaching people about Shemitah. But inside of me, I'm going to hold this place of really remembering how important it is to have this uh, Shabbat time of thinking of really what is important and what is the divine purpose of our life here. So I bless us all in a very meaningful and um, and life-changing uh, Shemitah year. Thank you. Thank you so much, Rabbi Mira. Uh, I would like to take this opportunity to invite everyone to a small discussion. We're gonna take about 10 minutes and it will give us an opportunity to uh, think a little bit what the Shemitah means for each and every one of us. And for that, we're going to have six outstanding rabbis from the Israel Reform Movement leading the discussion rooms. We have Rabbi Ada Zavido from the Harel Congregation, Rabbi Alon Anir Karen from the Vaseret Zion Congregation, Rabbi Noah Mazor from Yehel Congregation, Rabbi Dana Sharon from Keilat Yuvel Bagadea, Rabbi Orit Rosenblit, a regional rabbi in the Kiryat Shmona area, and student rabbi Sivan Navon and myself. So when you will receive uh, a notification to go to a certain room, please do that. And we'll be back here all together in about 10 minutes. Have a meaningful time. Hello, hello, everybody. Odeda Taiti. Okay, we are with you, Rabbi Ada Zavido. Wonderful. So uh, good evening, Chag Sameach, everybody. Um, it's a great pleasure and honor to be here and to lead in 10 minutes something like a conversation about Shemitah, a huge, huge uh, subject. 
and can be very meaningful in our uh, personal uh, life. So um, because we, we really have such a short time, I would like to ask you shortly, what is Shmita for you? Um, what can you think about? Maybe in one word or maybe two. And just to say that the word Shmita in Hebrew is also a verb, Lishmot. I mean, there is the Shmita, right? Every seven years, but also I can Lishmot to get rid of, to just to let go. So um, uh, when we think about the things that we want to Lishmot, it's kind of a words, a game in, in words. What, what are you thinking about? Can you tell us, can you share with us, let's say one thing that you will, <laughs> would want and you will be happy Lishmot uh, in this new year, Hebrew year that we are all just began. So who will be brave to start like Nachshon that jumped to the, uh, to the sea? Um, when we fled from Egypt, who, are, who is going to be our Nachshon? And tell us one thing uh, that you wish to get rid of, like Shemitah, to fulfill the mitzvah, the commandment of mitzvah. I see the face of Neil here, and I see Noga from Israel. Hi, Noga. <laughs> and... Um, Barbara is here also, so you can just, uh, even with a camera that is not open, you can just speak if you want. So the, the question the question is, what things will we want to get rid of in the coming year? Absolutely, because this is actually Shemitah. In, in the sabbatical year, we just don't do. We don't work uh, the field. We just leave it as it is. Whoop. So uh, it's, and it's great because now there is food for everybody. Everybody can go to the field in the sabbatical year and eat from it. The poor, the rich, everybody. And um, we should think that the land is not ours. It's God's in the sabbatical year. This idea is very strong. Uh, so we cannot possess everything. <laughs> there are things that we should just let go for our benefit, for our well-being. That's the idea of Shemitah spiritually. Um, so if you want to share with us, Neil, like Nachshon, we will call you Nachshon. Ani Rav, but Texas. Ah, uh, my colleague. Okay. I, did, I, didn't, I didn't put it on there. I don't know. That's okay. a good question. I, I don't know. I don't know if I have anything. I, I, I guess, you know, because Shemitah year doesn't, hit me the way that it should. Um, I guess I've always appreciated the uh, the idea of letting one seventh of the land light, you know, so instead of taking a year of letting go, I just uh, slow down, I guess, over the course of seven years. So one seventh of me is uh, empty per year. I know that sounds weird. Um, I don't know. I, 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 I'm not really sure how we're going to incorporate Shemitah. I wish I had a better answer. Mm -hmm. um, no, you gave us a one a very good answer. And you know, in Israel, we call it a sabbatical year. We give yeah. in, in, the, in, in the law, in the state of Israel, uh, each seventh year for teachers, for example, they have also asked the rabbis, the congregational rabbis in Israel, we can go to a sabbatical year. And I think it is, it's also in the CCAR that we uh, just after several years, we, sh we must rest. We cannot, you know, uh, you know, all our lives run from one assignment to another. We must rest like the land. We must do Shemitah as human beings as well. So uh, <laughs> to stop <laughs> running, and I think COVID-19 really taught us this idea. The whole world is now in a, okay, we stopped. I see now Ellie. Hi, Ellie. Uh, would you like to share with us your idea? What would you like to, how would you like to fulfill the mitzvah of Shemitah? Well, I'm, my, my yard is resting this year. Um, 
I'm giving all the gardens, the, the planting around my house, a chance to rest, but I'm entranced by the fact that I practiced pediatrics from 1968 until 2004 and never had sabbatical time. Wow. Never had a long time off. And I'm thinking that it would have been so nice to have had some extended period of self-renewal that was longer than two and a half weeks or three weeks. Um, wow, I'm jealous. <laughs> <laughs> I saw a, a cat in your room, so we, we should, I am a cat lover. I have also a cat in my home. <laughs> So we should le just uh, learn from the cats. They have sabbatical every day. <laughs> they have Shemitah <laughs> every day. They know to take off and to say, leave us alone. <laughs> we, we, are, we are going to sleep 20, 20 hours a day. Yes. So uh, they exaggerate, of course, but uh, they, know <laughs> they know to rest. They know to pose. Uh, sabbatical Shemitah means to pose, actually. And now I see, thank you so much. I see Catherine, hi, from London. Hi. Hello, hello to hi. you. My God's to London. <laughs> hi, Ali. <laughs> um, something that last year taught me to do, because I, I worked through lockdown. Um, I was working at a special needs college. But what it did teach me to do was to take time for myself and to, I'm not good at sitting still. Mm. I'm watching something <laughs> on television. I'm doing something else at the same time. I'm either preparing something for school or I'm preparing something for work, for workshops, whatever. This past year has, I made myself sit for five minutes and do nothing. And I got it up to three quarters of an hour <laughs> and wow. it's been really hard, but I want to continue doing that because I really have felt the benefit of it. And it's, it's really difficult if you're not used to being able to sit doing nothing to, to just sit. Um, so I'd like to be able to carry that forward and expand on that. So wow. it's hard work though. I'm not good at it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a Doesn't question always of work. practicing maybe, but it sounds it very, very meaningful, this journey that you had just to, <laughs> you know, wow. But there's always too much to do. That's the problem. So uh, when you're chairing the and the you're working. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we are. Absolutely. So yeah, that's my bit. <laughs> yeah. I think it's good for the well-being of our body and spirit as well to learn from the Shemitah <laughs> that even the land, the land is a living something, you know. In it. So the land, like human beings, needs that pose. And uh, we, we you know, I know in the intensive life that we all led before the corona, before the COVID-19, we didn't have time to think about it and we just ran <laughs> uh, via, you know, um, cars and, and airplanes and what, you know, from one state to another, crazy. I, I think that after, after the corona, many of us uh, will not want to return to the way we lived before because it was much too much without any Shemitah at all, not after seven years and not after 14 <laughs> years, just, you know, constant running. I know yeah. from my life as a full-time congregational rabbi, which means actually to work 24 seven, or as I want to say 25 eight, you know? <laughs> and when we had the lockdown, everybody at home, home sweet home. So um, we took kind of a sabbatical. And uh, now I see Noga. Hi, Noga from Israel. Um, would you like to um, also to say you're a very important role in the Israeli movement? And, okay. 
I'm sorry, I apologize. My my internet is not stable and I wasn't sure if I opened my camera, like you can hear me or whatever. Anyway, uh, I'm Noga Moliniak and I'm the, I'm the current chair of the General Assembly of the IMPJ. Would you like in one moment, because they are going to close the room in one moment, to say what is Shemitah for you? You are as, as an Israeli <laughs> with the land here in Israel. Um, for me, Shemitah, it, it's just a tradition that it, it's not so significant for me. I mean, uh, what's significant for me is the idea that uh, people were talking about it, the idea that Judaism has, um, has always um, um, had uh, respect for the nature, for the environment. It's not a modern issue like today, but there was always environmental issues and concerns in, uh, in the Jewish tradition. So that's the important thing, but not the Shemitah itself. I think it's, it's not relevant anymore because, you know, it's, it's not like the agricultural cycle of, of, the, um, of, of trees, of, of um, crops, of everything. It's not like it used to be in the ancient world. So it's just the idea that we care about the nature, we care about the environment. Which, which are two very important ideas. Thank you, Noga. <laughs> I want to uh, bless all of you with Chag Sameach from Jerusalem, from Israel. Be well and don't forget Lishmot from time to time things. Bye bye. <laughs> Thank you, Rebbe Um, we're waiting for everyone to get back in. We've closed all the rooms. And hopefully... It looks like people are coming back. Ben, Benji, you can, we would I be happy would to, hear to hear you sing right for. now. Oh. Thank you. It, it was a bit unexpected. <laughs> Oh, 
Thank you, Benny. And now it's really a pleasure to introduce our good friend, Rabbi Joshua Weinberg, Vice President of the URJ, President of ARTSA, the Association of Reform Zionists of, of America. Josh. Thank you, David, and thank you, Anna and, and Benny. Wonderful to be with all of you, and Chag Sameach, and Moadim Simcha. It was, uh, of course, the famous Rabbi Rav Cook, Avram Yitzhak Cohen Cook, who said that Yashan uh, Yitchadesh Yitkadesh, that the old will be renewed and that new thing will now be holy or be sanctified. And the Zionist story is all about doing just that. And the Shemitah year is, is such a perfect example of how we can take this ancient tradition and apply it in a new practical modern context uh, where everyone who's living in Israel and really all of us living around the world can take uh, from this ancient practice and realizing that as, uh, as, as holiness goes to people, that the land also needs to rest and it also needs to renew itself and rejuvenate and re-energize um, that we can take this as an example. And as, as religious Zionists, uh, we hope that this year will renew our sense of connection to the earth and not you know, into the entire earth uh, in a message of stewardship and uh, in our ability to care for the world that we live in, but specifically also to Haaretz, uh, to the land of Israel. Um, and let's recognize and express our gratitude for our abundance and for everything that we have together uh, and make sure that we don't take that for granted. And let's also use this opportunity to mend our relationships and our obligations um, to release all from bondage and release all of those who are you know, somehow in, in, in debt or in slavery um, and to renew our connection with, with one another. So uh, we'll end with a, uh, with, with a bracha. Um, and if you put the, uh, the slide up there, I want to, um, just some practical things that I think we should all to do. First of all, let's take our lesson from our, our good friend, uh, Yosef Abramowitz, who's with us. And Put solar panels on all your buildings. Um, check out Yachdav, the program, and learn an environmental curriculum between the IMPJ and your school uh, at home. And learn about creative ecology from our friends at Kibbutz Dotan. Even join our Zionist Beit Midrash here in North America uh, that's going to be dedicated to eco-Zionism and, uh, and, and the Shemitah year. And most important, may this year be the year that after so many people canceled their trips or postponed their trips, that we can all actually be in person in the land of Israel uh, together and that you can go physically to be there. And I wanna end with this one line uh, from my friend Rabbi David Seidenberg that you can add now to your Birkot uh, Hamazon at the end of your meal while sitting in the sukkah, it says, Harachaman hu yeshiv libenu el ha'aretz lema neshev yachad ima b'shavta kol shnat hashmita. May the merciful one turn our hearts toward the land so that we meet, that we may dwell together with her in her Shabbat and the whole year of Shmita. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Josh. Thank you, Rabbi Weinberg. 
It's my distinct honor and pleasure to introduce our seventh and final Ushpizin of our program tonight, the chair of the executive board of the IMPJ, um, Yair Lutstein. Hi, friends. I want to, I, I'm not going to give you words of wisdom, but I'm rather going to speak, give you just a few words of thanks to everyone who, who arrived and joined us for this wonderful evening. It's wonderful seeing so many good friends, uh, and uh, we all look forward to, to the opportunity to meet in person again. I want to thank, take the opportunity to thank uh, everyone who uh, organized this evening, and I'll, I have to mention a couple of people, so you'll bear with me. Gal Moyal, who is in charge of our Zoom controls. They're behind the scenes, but Leo and Andy from Shock Audio in London, who have been incredible in doing a lot of the work and the audio. And we thank uh, our friends at Artsenu who always connect us with Andy and Leo. Lana Zilberman, Zilberman Salway, who produced this evening's program. Toda Lana, to David, who's been behind the scenes and been very, very uh, central in putting this evening together. To Boaz and Benny for the music, for uh, Mira for her limud, for all of the, the rabbi facilitators of our conversations. It's been meaningful. It's wonderful always to be able to have conversations within a small group of people. I'll just end by saying that these are exciting times for us. You know, changes and transitions can all can be frightening, but they're also a time of, of wonderful potential. And we're thrilled to have, as Gilad said at the beginning of the evening, two wonderful women leaders who are now at the helm of our movement. And it's a wonderful thing. I think it's the first time that our reform movement, I don't think, I know, it has had a woman standing at the helm. We're very excited about that. Orly at the helm of Iraq, uh, along with Anat, who's, who's with us. And we are very optimistic. Today, I can report to you that some of us met with Foreign Minister Yair Lapid and his deputy in the the Sukkah at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. And they were both very excited to see us there and to talk to us about the fact that we, the reform movement in Israel, besides what we do here in Israel, are also a bridge to you, to the Jewish, the liberal Jewish community around the world. And the opportunity to be able to engage with those communities around the world Knowing that we that and and it was interesting to hear both of them say it's okay to sometimes criticize the state of Israel out of love, the government of Israel. It's okay uh, because it's we all know that it's been done for love. At the same time, to continue the dialogue, not to disengage, understanding that it's through you folks that we are that the government and the state of Israel will be able to engage with the Jewish communities abroad. That was a very potent and important message that I took away from that meeting. That we are the we, the reform movement and other liberal movements here in Israel, are a bridge to the diaspora, to the people living abroad. And last but not least, we talked about seeing each other. We are keeping our fingers crossed. Write the dates down, the 17th and 18th of June next year. We are going to have our Vida and you will get to save the date within the within the coming month is we are very we're very excited about it we're looking forward to having many people come in from abroad and it's going to be a very very as always a very authentic israeli reform celebration and we all need that celebration after these years of isolation and quarantine etc we're hoping that in the 9 months till then we are we are able to have that celebration together. As Averim, Chag Sukkot Sameach, Moadim Simcha, and once again, Shana Tova to all of us. May this be a year of health, of prosperity, of peace, and uh, of continued friendship and partnership. Darabach Averim for joining us here this evening. Toda Rabbi Ayer. Thank you so much, Yair. You already said all the things. So uh, I'm joining. Toda Rabba, Shana Tova, Chak Sameach, Briut, Besorot Tovot, 
Thank you all for leading, blessing, participating, and Benny will uh, lead us away with uh, a festive Sukkot song. Toda rabba lekulam. Oh,